with Build Alpha. Um, in this video, I want to talk about um, how Build Alpha and myself prevent against curve fitting. Now, if you don't know what curve fitting is, I have another video talking about out of sample testing and curve fitting. Um, you should check out. But in short, curve fitting is finding um, a pattern or formula that fits your historical data so well that it will most surely fail when it sees new data. So in our example would be we find an awesome trading strategy on the past 10 years and as soon as we go to trade it live, um, it's, it's terrible. It starts to lose money immediately. Um, okay, so the thing with data mining is, so Build Alpha searches hundreds of thousands of combinations and builds the best strategies. Um, you, know, you can basically just grab stuff, throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Um, and then obviously test it with Build Alpha's tools. But with data mining, people will often argue that if you do that big of a search, you're going to find something that looks good even by random chance. Um, so how do we know if something we found actually has edge or if it's just a, it just survives um, all of our testing by pure chance, by pure luck? Okay, so the main way to do, so essentially um, we want to avoid what's called p-hacking. So p-hacking is um, you run a bunch of tests and they all are terrible except one of them shows statistical significance. Its p-value is low enough that you could reject the null hypothesis. Um, and you report that, hey, I found this great one. Um, the p-value, everything passes all of the tests. And you don't tell anyone that you ran 100,000 other tests that all failed. Okay, so build alpha, the first way that, that we combat this is you can plot all of the other strategies it finds. So as you can see, um, we didn't throw out 100,000 bad tests. Okay, the second thing build alpha does is let's say that you run 500 strategy or 500 uh, signals or 1,000 signals um, through the simulator. Build alpha will also create 1,000 other fake signals and 1,000 other fake data sets, um, so fake price data sets. And as it's running the simulation on the real data with the real signals that you selected, it will also run the 1,000 fake signals on the 1,000 data sets in the background, um, and it will try to make the best random strategies or fake strategies it possibly can. So it is our understanding that if you that our real strategy should be significantly better than the best random strategy that Build Alpha could create. Because if we're not better than the best it could do by random signals and random fake data, then odds are what we found is also lucky. So this random button allows you to plot how the other strategies, the random strategies it found. So as you could see at about trade 600, Build Alpha is about $40,000 better than its competitors. Um, and by, I mean competitors as in the fake random strategies. Um, so this is a good sign to make sure we're preventing against um, data mining. Uh, the, some other things we've built in Build Alpha is this verse random button. So you can basically see how every performance metric does versus all of the random strategies. So as you can see here, um, significantly better distribution for the real strategies PNL compared to the random signals, um, fake data's um, distribution. Um, so this is something you want to see. You can see the compound annual growth rate much better. The average trade is much better. Um, these are just simple tests to make sure that you are above what could have been found by random or luck. Um, so there's two main tests um, that also prevent against data mining bias that are most commonly um, referenced in academia, but I want to talk about why Build Alpha has the best solution, the verse random um, and the random uh, strategy creation that you can compare against, as opposed to these two tests, which I think each have their own and separate flaws. So the first test is White's reality check. So White's reality check is done, um, I'm going to try to walk you through the complicated test and then explain why it's flawed. So the first thing you do is you take the strategies back test results. So I have, let's just say I only created two strategies. So each one of them I have uh, for each day the mark to market results of the strategy. So in White's reality check run one, I randomize the day order and I allow 
resampling. So you can see two is repeated. So then for each strategy, I, I basically, it's called a bootstrapping method. I go and find the return that's associated with that day. And I've created another strategy that has a random order based on our random reshuffling of the days. Now I do that for each of my strategies in my test. So if I ran and created 1,000 tests, I would create 1,000 bootstrap um, tests for White's Reality Check Run 1. Then I calculate the average of each one of these tests. So as you can see, the best average survives. So now I would do that run, uh, that's run one, I would do that 1,000 times where I'm reshuffling the trade order, or the day's order, go and getting the, the associated um, return with that day, and then calculating the average, allowing the best average to move on. Now when I've done that 1,000 times, I would have 1,000 best averages in this G column. Now those 1,000 best averages are gonna create a distribution. And what I can do is, is then I can compare my actual strategies um, average to that distribution of all the best ones we've created from doing the White's reality check. And if my one is still the best, then we could say it's statistically significant. Now the test seems great. Um, it makes sense. It's very popular in evidence-based technical analysis, a book. But it has two main flaws. The first one is we are randomly reshuffling the trade results, and that means if we have curve-fitted, then we're just reshuffling curve-fitted trade results. And the second one is, what if we only found one good strategy? Odds are that it would be very easy to pass this test because as we reshuffle the, the bad strategies, we're not going to find a lot of good averages to put in this G column most of them are going to come from the one good strategy we found. Um, so that's another flaw. So a second test is called the Monte Carlo permutation test. So this strategy, what it does um, is you have your, your trading rules, right? So zero is flat, one is long, and negative one would be a short position. And you list those out for every day of your actual um, real trades. Then you take the strategy returns for the, the, the first strategy, you randomize them and multiply them by the trade rules. So as you can see, zero times negative 1.75 is zero. One times 1 1.5 is, is one and a half. So I would do that for each strategy. Again, only two in this example. Um, and after the first one, I have this average and after the second one, I have, or for the second strategy after the first run, I have this average. And the best average survives and goes into column N. Then I randomize them again, randomize the um, actual strategy's returns, and I multiply the randomized returns by the strategy's rules. The strategy's rules stay static. And then I have my second Monte Carlo permutation. I then calculate the average for strategy one and strategy two after the randomization and multiplication. And then the best average moves on to uh, column M. Now I would do this 1,000 times and create 1,000 averages in M. And the same thing, I would then compare my actual strategies mean to the distribution of the best means we put in column M from our Monte Carlo permutations. Now, the flaw with this test is, is that it doesn't take into account volatility clustering. So when I randomize the strategy results that are in um, column B and put them in column F, it doesn't take into account that, for example, volatility, big moves and big down moves tend to get followed by big up moves. So if I start randomizing those things, I might ruin a strategy that took advantage of that underlying feature in our data set. Um, so any strategy that has autocorrelation um, or takes advantage of volatility, like a mean reversion strategy that looks for a big drop and then it likes to buy some, um, is going to really fail in this test. And that's not fair to um, a strategy that has that characteristic. So how do we make a test that uh, encompasses all of our possible strategy characteristics, uh, whether it's you know long convexity um, or it's concave, you know trend following, mean reverting, uh, pattern matching, 
Um, and the solution we found, it's not White's realities check, it's not Monte Carlo permutation, it's to create a baseline using random signals and fake data and random signals on real data and creating the best possible strategy you could um, to create a baseline. And if your strategy still outperforms that baseline, then you could be sure that what you found wasn't data mined and found by random luck, but rather contained some actual statistical edge and validity. Um, and not to mention things like E-ratio um, are pretty much just impervious to data uh, curve fitting. It's just a raw measure of how much um, favorable movement you get compared to adverse movement. And I know I have a blog on my uh, site that covers that, but I hope this example helps clear up some of the, um, the fears of data mining um, and let you guys know that a lot of pros use this technique, big banks use this technique, um, and it's important that you understand why some of the common statistical tests don't work with trading um, and what does. Uh, I hope that's clear. Uh, like always, catch you guys in the next one.